your voice. You realize you sound ridiculous, right? But you should have seen me at the Stones concert the other night. I was dancing and singing. It sounds like you've been smoking butts. I'm not a criminal. I haven't touched a cigarette since they were banned, so. Oh, Jeopardy, nice. You realize that concert was like four days ago, eh? Hmm. Who is Neil Armstrong? Uh, Neil Armstrong was a cyclist, honey. What? I think we'll just wait and see what they say and, you know, play it by year. What did you just say? Play it, we'll play it by year. Yeah, it's, it's not year, it's ear. You play it by ear. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's play it by year. <laughs> Wanna bet? Sure. Oh. What does it say? Doesn't matter. <laughs> you trying to poison me? You're going to the doctor. All right, I'll go to bar. Marcus, stop. How, how's your day going? Good. You're, you're in my chair, though. Uh, Marcus, just yeah. squeeze. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Great. So, Marcus, seems to be the problem. Oh, well, I've had a sore throat for about a week now. Yeah. Uh, it has to swallow. I tried to drink some water. I couldn't mm -hmm. barely get that down. And right. uh, I coughed up a whole bunch of blood. Okay. I think I heard sore throat in there somewhere, so maybe we should uh, take a swab. Did you get the part about me coughing up a bunch of blood? Oh. Jeez, yeah, I got it all right here. We better take a closer look. Uh, hmm, okay. You smoke? No. You can tell me. No, I don't. Okay. Hmm. How long have you had this lump here? My Adam's apple, since I was 11, 14. No, not your Adam's apple. This lump. Here. I don't know. Hmm. You better take a sample. This is really gonna hurt. Okay, Marcus, we got your samples. I'll uh, let you know if we need anything else. We're done here. You can go home. No. Who is St. Michael Jackson? Who is Prime Minister Michael J. Fox? Who is King Harry? Who is the late President Donald Trump? Hello? Okay. 245? Okay, no problem. I'll see you then. Thanks a lot, bye. Please, take a seat. So, let's get to it. I'm sure you guys can imagine the reason you're here uh, is we've got your test results back and I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. You have throat cancer. And the good news? The, the good news? Oh. Sorry, uh, that that was the good news. the The bad news is you're not gonna make it. Yeah, we uh, we stopped validating parking at three p.m. and it's two fifty six. I'm sorry, there's no way you're gonna make it. Okay, um, I can tell by your reactions that this must be your first cancer. Okay, take a deep breath. There's no need to worry. These days, we are experts at early diagnosis and treating cancers compared to say 10, 15 years ago. We now have what you call personalized cancer treatment. Um, you see, in the past, most cancer patients were treated pretty much the same way using the same chemotherapy drugs, uh, radiation therapy, you know, kind of a one size fits all type of treatment. Most of these therapies were aimed at killing 
fast dividing cells, which is a characteristic of cancer cells. Um, however, there are lots of other cells that also share this characteristic, like your skin, your hair. Um, those drugs would kill all of those cells as well, and voila, the unpleasant side effects. After all that, there was still no guarantee you would remain cancer free. Cancer genomics field has progressed considerably. Now, we examine each individual's tumor cells on the level of its DNA, find the exact mutations that are causing the cancer, and then administer drugs specifically targeting those mutations. This way, we manage to kill only the cancer cells that harbor these mutations and leave the healthy cells of the body completely intact. Whoa. Back up a sec. What do you mean by examining the tumor's DNA? Aha! Uh -huh. Good question. I thought you looked like a smart guy. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'll assume you know what DNA is, but do you know what the genome refers to? Take a cell. Most cells of the body have a nucleus, and in that nucleus you will find all of your chromosomes, which are made up of tightly packed DNA. The genome refers to all of the DNA in the cell, and genomics is simply the study of that genome. But isn't DNA really long? Like, won't it take ages to analyze? Oh, yeah, it's long all right. We're talking three billion base pairs, and it doesn't take nearly as long as you may think. Well, at least not anymore. You see, we use these so-called next generation sequencing technologies that are extremely fast. The sequencing of the genome starts with extracting DNA from the cell. These are then broken down into many little pieces, which are then sequenced. Thanks to these new technologies, we are able to sequence millions of pieces simultaneously, saving an amazing amount of time, as well as money. Here is an idea of what the sequence data looks like, where each one of these gray bars represents one of the small DNA pieces. We then put these pieces together to find the sequence of the complete genome. So what does this have to do with cancer? Remember when I took those cell samples from your throat the other day? I actually took samples from both the tumor and the surrounding healthy tissue. The lab then extracted the DNA from both cells and sequenced them. What comes next is amazing. After the sequencing was done, they compared the DNA sequence of your normal tissue with the DNA sequence of your cancerous tissue. You see this single base here? It's supposed to be an A. We do indeed see A's in the normal tissue, but the cancerous tissue has T's instead. We look for all differences between the two tissues. Those might be indicative of mutations that are causing the cancer. Might? Wouldn't any difference between the normal and cancerous DNA represent a cancer-causing mutation? It's not quite as simple as that. We are likely to see hundreds of genes mutated in the cancer sample. However, we classify the mutations into two groups, the drivers and the passengers. The drivers are the ones driving the disease, basically causing it. In order to kill the cancer cells, we have to find the drivers and target those. How long has this kind of personalized treatment been around for? The very first case was done here in Vancouver in 2010. It was a case of rare cancer of the tongue for which no established therapy existed. So the patient's DNA was examined carefully to find the driver mutations, which were then targeted by the drugs. Back then, this kind of treatment was in its infancy, so more expensive and as well time consuming. Like, it would cost about 10 grand and take eight days to sequence the genome. This is when personalized cancer treatment was in its research stage and not yet moved to the clinic. What does this mean for me? Seeing as we were able to identify the driving mutations in your case, we now know which specific drug will target it. I've already emailed the prescription to your pharmacist and your medication should be waiting for you when you get home. Wow, that's great, that's amazing. But in terms of price, how expensive are we talking? Having your genome sequence costs around 200 bucks and the drug, I don't know, about 80 or 90. <laughs> Before you get too excited, Parking 65. To be fair, that is bad news. <laughs>